All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and we are here to check out the all-new 2021 Kia Sorento S front-wheel drive. So who do we have to thank for this opportunity? It is none other than University Kia in Durham, North Carolina, and all of Z's information will be down in the description box. If you are interested in purchasing the Sorento, a Telluride, a Stinger, or whatever you want, all of their information will be down below. So why are we checking out the new Sorento? Well, that's because it's all new, but also I have driven the previous generation as well and I absolutely love the previous Sorento. It was just such an amazing vehicle to drive, to handle, comfort, everything was great with that car and it came with an amazing V6 option which is obviously no longer here but this is all new and they made a ton of changes with it so I'm here to talk about those but I'm actually going to start this review off a little bit different. I'm going to go over some spec sheet stuff with you because well this thing is all new and I don't want to miss anything so let's start out the X-Line trim, that's actually all new for the Sorento. It gives you an extra one inch of ground clearance. It's similar to like the Kia Soul with the X-Line trim. I mean, it's, it's whatever. More importantly though, the V6, like I mentioned, it's gone predictably, but it's been replaced with a two and a half liter turbo engine producing 281 horsepower and 311 pounds feet of torque. But here's the thing, it's made it to a dual clutch eight speed. So I'm not a huge fan of Kia, Hyundai's dual clutch transmissions. They're typically trash. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same thing with that vehicle as well. This particular model I'm checking out is not the turbo. It's actually the base four cylinder option, no turbos. It is a port and direct injected engine though. So that's pretty great, but it's made it to their traditional amazing eight speed automatic. Just the regular torque converted one. Love this. Well, I'm gonna test it out, but they've usually always done a great job with it. But another huge thing, this thing, will also come in two hybrid flavors as well made it with a 1.6 liter turbo and there's going to be a regular hybrid and also a plug-in hybrid so those are going to be amazing that was really smart of kia to do that and if they if this dealership gets one in i will definitely be sure to check that out as well so that's pretty exciting seating configuration has changed i'll talk more about that in the interior segment obviously a class leading slew of you know standard safety equipment you know Kia Hyundai, they always do a great job with that, but they've also added a few other new safety features as well. And that's going to be optional. Like, you know, when you step out of the car, it'll let you know if there's vehicles coming in uh, from behind you. So they don't just clear, clear off your, uh, your door from you. So there is that, but also the exterior design obviously is different. Now you let me know in the comment section, how you like the new exterior design. It kind of looks like a cell toes in the front, like tell you right in the rear. I personally like it. I think it's a clean design for an SUV. So that's pretty good. And obviously all these trim levels, you can get them optional with either front wheel drive or all wheel drive. So that's another thing. And this is actually built upon the new N3 platform, you know, similar to the Kia K5 that I tested out as well. So that's another thing. So what are some of the changes between this N3 platform and the previous generation? Well, it's got a increase in the wheelbase by 1.4 inches. The body weight has been reduced overall by 3.1% or 119 pounds. So this thing weighs about 3,800 pounds and about 3,935 if you get the all wheel drive. So that's another thing. Average tensile strength has improved by 4%. They've increased the driving dynamics, the handling, and reduced the NVH. That's another thing that they did with the K5 as well. They made the car safer, obviously, and they have provided us with some new technology if you go up in trim levels, which I'll talk more about the in the interior segment. So that's some of the basic things. And let's just go ahead. Let's just get this bad boy out of the road and see how it drives now. Now, already, I'm liking the seating position of this thing. You know, the seating adjustment here is a lot of adjustability if you're a taller individual you can, you can set the seat up a little bit lower if you want so that's pretty good steering is extremely smooth in these uh lower speed you know it's very light i do like that a lot and there's a little drive mode selection thing here that we can test out okay no idea what these people are doing but let's go ahead let's uh launch this thing off here Okay, not bad at all, not bad at all. So as you can see there, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, squealing of the tires, that's to be expected. Of course, this is the front wheel drive model and it had pretty good punch off the line, but uh, once you get this thing back up to speed, it does kind of not fall flat on its face, but you know, it does ring out pretty good as a whole though. I'll talk more about that in a bit. So that's that naturally aspirated regular four cylinder, the base engine options. So this is actually the S model and sits one up from the LX trim. So that's the new base trim model. And I actually like this trim. This is actually personally, I think the model I would get for the price because this thing is about uh, 33 grand, something like that with all the options fitted to it. So I think that's pretty good. I think that's a sweet spot for a vehicle like this. 
And this engine is also very good as well. And I've also tested out the base four cylinder in the previous generation Sorento as well, and it was really good. But you saw it kind of like, you know, squealing the tires up a little bit. So this thing is fitted with the 18 inch wheels base. It comes with 17 inch wheels. Uh, this thing has 235 wide tires in all four corners. The tires are pretty good. It's continental uh, cross contact. So I do like these as an all season tire, but all wheel drive is an $1,800 option. I believe across all the trim levels. And I would personally get that would make this a lot more versatile and actually make a lot more sense. I do like how the steering is extremely light. I do appreciate that quite a bit. You don't have any uh, paddle shifters or anything like that here, but um, yeah, this particular model is fitted with the regular eight speed. I love this regular eight speed transmission. It is so silky smooth. It just makes a whole lot of sense. You know, with their dual clutches, they always do like a, they're, they're not very smooth in everyday driving. So this thing, it still kicks down extremely well. I just wish they would use this across the board. You know what I'm saying? And I do believe this is more than enough power to move this thing. You know, they did lower the weight by 119 pounds uh, overall. So I didn't have an issue with the four cylinder in the previous Sorento, but now I definitely don't have an issue with it because it does weigh a little bit less. And I think they did up the uh, output a little bit as well for this regular four cylinder. Now the hybrids are gonna be what's interesting to test out, but I love how light the steering rack feels. You know, let's put in the sport mode here. Again, it's not a rocket ship off the line. Don't expect that. It's just a normal family SUV. What's interesting about the four-cylinder turbo, you know, everybody talks about this. It's got a 311 pounds feet of torque, but that's a lot of torque to be sent just to the front wheels only. I definitely had to get that with the um, all-wheel drive because I did drive the uh, Hyundai Santa Fe with the turbo engine front wheel drive and it was peeling out everywhere. But this 311 pounds feet of torque, that is actually like 50 more pounds feet than the Kia Telluride. But honestly, if you were to option this Sorento up, to like the SX Prestige trims and all that, I would just get a Telluride with that amazing V6. That thing was so nice. But this is also an extremely quiet and comfortable vehicle, dude. I mean, the previous generation was too, but this is now almost in line with the Telluride, actually. This is a very quiet and comfy car. No double pane glass or anything like that, but this is actually pretty good for the most part. And it is, of course, still the same strut based suspension up front and a multi-link rear suspension uh, that has not changed. The suspension geometry has not changed there. Steering did tighten up a little bit in the sport mode, but uh, I just don't like how it kind of hangs around the 2000 RPM mark, uh, just wasting twice as much fuel as you would typically use. So that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Let's see here, let's go ahead. It's kind of a whole lot of body roll, of course. You know, handling is not this thing's forte, of course. Uh, <laughs> but let's see if the, you know, turning circle is any better. Uh, not bad for a vehicle of this size, it's pretty good do like that but yeah again this thing i feel like the older sorrento actually handled a lot better than this but let's see let's test it out one more time trash control light coming on of course got in the sport mode right now holds the gears that's not bad but you don't have any paddles or anything like that so there is that let's put this back into the uh comfort mode because that's what's most appropriate for this vehicle but anyway uh the brakes are so good with this thing dude i love the brakes you know kia hyundai always gets the braking performance right it doesn't peel out when you uh step on it from a start so that's good yeah this is a super quiet car i like that there's hardly any tire noise any road noise Obviously these are Continental tires, so that's good, but there's no wind noise either. And this is actually a pretty windy day. So uh, refinement, the NVH stuff that they did, amazing. Kia has nailed the uh, the daily driver formula so well, and I love that. So that's great. And that's honestly, that's the most important thing with a vehicle like this, you know, just me driving it like a jerk off, it doesn't really do it much justice because, uh, you know, strangely enough, I will admit though, the previous Sorento to me felt like it handled better. I don't know what that is, but it felt like a lot more grippy. I like the way the chassis handled. This is actually a pretty decent chassis. It does feel like um, it pivots around you, but it's just like there's like a lack of mechanical grip with this particular one. It is what it is, but uh, I certainly, I, I don't mind driving this car one, but I have, a, I have a lot of confidence driving this vehicle. And also when you get this thing up to speed, the high speed stability is excellent with this thing. You know, these are the most important things. You know, you want this thing to be comfortable. You want this thing to be quiet and you want this thing to feel stable out at speed. So that's the most important thing with this vehicle. And in those regards, it has delivered perfectly. 
and definitely the comfort mode is my most favorite mode. It still um, kicks down perfectly and yeah, this is just such a good motor for this vehicle, but most importantly, it's a good transmission for this vehicle as well. When you're just driving around normally though, it doesn't feel all rolly and like all over the place like you might expect. It's only when you like really thrash it into a corner when you feel like the, uh, the deficiencies in its uh, handling capabilities, but out in just like regular driving out of the streets here, you, f you feel very confident whipping this thing around. That's a great thing. This thing is rated to get about 24 city, 29 on the highway. It's not like unbelievable MPG numbers, but for the size, for the weight of this thing, I totally forget it. It's definitely not bad at all. Obviously the hybrid models, you know, I'm very curious to try those out. I think that can make a lot of sense, especially if you get that in the more kind of base trims, because that's something that the Hyundai Santa Fe does not offer actually. So that, that, that could be very unique and something to uh, put on your short list to maybe compete with the RAV4 or something like that. And I get it, this thing is like a three row and I'll talk more about this in the interior segment, but that three row nonsense, yeah, just fold down the third row, honestly. So yeah, what's my overall thoughts driving this thing? I mean, yeah, it's been very rewarding as a daily driver. It feels like a quality object to drive. I mean, Kia Hyundai is pretty much doing what um, freaking Toyota used to do by providing you with a quiet, comfy, nice daily driver now it's kind of kia hyundai that's doing that and these things are you know obviously very reliable because it's got a port and direct injected engine very smart of them but also it's backed by literally the best 10-year warranty so vehicles like this definitely a no-brainer if you can pick it up on a cheap lease deal that's all, all also a great thing as well and got a nice big uh, backup camera here so that's always a great thing to see so let's talk about this interior space so this has obviously been completely redesigned for the new Sorento, and I do like this interior space. It definitely looks, you know, sleek and uh, up to date modern. So that's a great thing. You know, they implemented a lot of interesting shapes here. So similar to the Kia Soul, actually. So I remember like a, a pattern similar to this in the uh, the Kia Soul, and it's just something that you know the other manufacturers don't really do. You know what I'm saying? That's just interesting. That's you know, it's a nice little shape right there. You know what I'm saying? I like this door handle. It's like this big old thing, and uh, the doors feel nice and heavy. And this thing feels solid as hell rolling down the street. So I really like that. I like how Kia kind of changes up the what do you call it? This freaking air vents. I like this a lot too. So it's kind of got like this smaller one underneath. It's cool, man. I like it. It's very cool. It feels of quality to use and to play with. So it's got a nice weight to it. All of it does. So that's really great. It's got automatic headlights. You got one touch up and down windows just for the driver's side window here and not for the other three windows. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but whatever. Like I mentioned, you get a few old safety features here, you know, lane keep assist, the blind spot monitoring, you know, things like that. But you also get like the other safety features, like I mentioned, you know, the pedestrian kind of when you step out of the vehicle, it'll let you know if there's a car coming behind you, you know, stuff like that. That's That stuff is optional. The S trim model also gets a leather uh, stitch kind of a steering wheel. So that's another great thing to see. You know, this is definitely the model to get. Do not go with the LX. This is the perfect model. Actually, this exact vehicle that I'm sitting in. This is a great model to go with, actually. I would like to pay an extra 1800 to get the uh, all-wheel drive. That's definitely something I would uh, look into, but even front-wheel drive, if you don't live in a place that sees a lot of snow, then definitely this should be okay. And like I mentioned, if you get the turbo model, you should definitely get the all-wheel drive for sure, but that does come with that if you kind of dual clutch eight speed this eight speed is amazing you also get heated seats in the front two seats at least so you get that you get a nice little hvac system here and i love how they always separate out the kind of temperature and the fan speed you don't have to look at the screen for that so that's great but i will say i wish they would give you like physical buttons for the fan speed stuff like it's kind of like this touch haptic thing it's kind of weird but whatever i i can get it over i do like the little knob that they use for the temperature so that's pretty nice and speaking of screen, so you got an eight inch screen right here. And th that's great, that's the base screen that you get. It's got the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, of course, as standard. But you do get a larger 10.25 inch screen and you can get a larger 12.3 inch screen in the gauge cluster here. All that is unnecessary. This setup, just the way it is, is perfect. It's the perfect amount of tech for this vehicle. Easy to use, easy to understand. This is great stuff. They get you uh, physical buttons here on the side, physical knobs for the volume knob. But I will say, Kia did listen to us, car reviewers. So they actually implemented a lot of matte colored textured materials or plastics inside the interior here at the bottom here, which is still great. It's not piano black plastic all in the, uh, the center console here, but I will say they still use piano black plastic in some other obtuse places like the steering wheel, the turn signal stocks, you know, and the touchscreen here. So at least they listened to us a little bit and they gave us 
some matte textured materials, you know, hopefully moving on in the future, they can kind of uh, clean up this black plastic up here as well. So that would be a nice thing to see. But yeah, overall, this, uh, this is a brand new car, obviously. So the interior feels extremely solid in here, but you have a nice large storage bin here with USB connectivity, that's great. And you can definitely fit a phone in there. Let's see if my Note 10 Plus fits absolutely, and that's not an issue, you can close that up. Nice practical amount of space, two big cup holders, some other ex additional space, and the door pocket space is also pretty great as well. I will say the audio system. So they actually reverted to using a Bose audio system for this new Sorento models. It's not the Harman Kardon stuff anymore. And you know, it's unfortunate because to get the Bose audio, the 12 speaker system, the updated one, you have to go all the way up to the um, SX Prestige trim. And that's just unfortunate. They should make that stuff optional, like kind of Mazda does. And I'm sure it's a fine system. You know, Mazda uses the Bose system and sounds pretty good there. So I'm assuming it's a similar system here. But I will say this base audio system doesn't sound bad. So that's good. So I'd still definitely recommend getting this. Uh, the purpose of you know, a Kia product such as this is to get it as cheap as possible with a few of the nice features that you'd want. And this S trim level seems to be doing that for around $33,000, $34,000. So that's great. You even have a panoramic sunroof too. So that's, you know, a lot of features here. And you also get a more leather trim seating surface for the S trim model. So it's another reason why I'm telling you to get this trim level because these seats are so freaking comfortable. They seem extremely durable as well. And it's comfortable like to the point where you know, and this is, I, I mean this in a good way, but the Nissan kind of zero gravity seats I've been testing out, this feels similar to that. So this feels very comfortable. It feels like you're kind of floating in the seat. So I know this is going to be a non-fatiguing experience for most people. Obviously the step in height is great. Um, it's not too large, it's not too low, and that makes it great for elderly people. So that's pretty nice. Now the seating configuration, let's talk about it in the rear seats and the third row seats, right? So this is kind of all new. The seating system can be kind of rearranged uh, however you like. This is technically a third row seat, but okay, here's the thing. I do fit definitely back there in the second row. I'm five foot 11. I got plenty of space up front, like I mentioned, a headroom, all that stuff is great, uh, even for much taller and larger individuals. And I can definitely fit behind myself, but you can kind of, kind of recline and move the seats about. If you move the second row seats up to give the third row occupant space, then there's hardly any space in the second row. So that's kind of worthless and stupid to me. So I got to leave the second row seats all the way back for it to be, you know, worthy of a vehicle of this size, right? And here's the thing, I can definitely sit in the third row, but it's a compromised third row system like it is in most of these vehicles. Um, like, I'm an adult and my knees are like really sitting up high because the floor is really high up. So that's what makes the third row kind of worthless and kind of stupid for adults because I can fit, but it's definitely not the best and you have to move the second row up. So it's just not pragmatic. This is definitely a two row vehicle with a very large trunk and that's how you should look at it and that's how you should treat it. There is HVAC for the, uh, the second row seat, so that's good. But yeah, speaking of third row, when you fold that thing down like the way I have here, there's plenty of space. It's similar to the previous generation Sorento, so that's really great. I believe there is a spare tire underneath. I'm not quite sure, but I believe there is. And uh, yeah, that's that's how you use this thing you know, as a as a two row SUV to fit adults and a bunch of stuff in the in the trunk. So that's how you do it. This trim level makes a lot of sense. I like what they did with the new Sorento. I like the refinement. This definitely feels a lot quieter than the previous generation Sorento. And I do think it's slightly a tad bit more comfortable as well. It's a very comfy car. Uh, most of these new Kia products are. The new K5 was amazingly comfortable and quiet. So that's another great vehicle. But I will say uh, they made it a lot softer. So Kia used to be like all about kind of more sportier driving. And I feel like they kind of softened it up. But I think that's appropriate for the types of vehicle that it, this is. So I don't mind it. I actually prefer this to be a softer vehicle. It's still got plenty of punch, even in this regular four cylinder, what is it, 191, 181 pounds feet of torque. Uh, that's pretty good. It's more than enough shove, and this is definitely the pragmatic engine. I would skip the turbo, and if you're gonna move up an engine, I'll probably get that 1.6 liter turbo with the hybrid trim option. So I need to check what the prices are on that. If this dealership gets one in, I'll definitely check it out, but you let me know in the comment section what you think about the new Sorento. It's, is this a vehicle that you would put on your personal short list? And would you get a fully loaded version of this or would you rather get a Telluride? So let me know in the comment section and uh, thank you again for watching this review. Take care and goodbye.